Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel, your home for crypto news and interviews. If you are an XRP holder, I have some very bullish news for you. Ripple is releasing a $250 million creator fund to enable the building of NFTs on the XRP ledger. Now, I'm going to share the details with you and why I think that's important for the price of XRP. And also Ripple's general counsel, Stuart Alderati, weighs in on crypto regulations and what Senator Pat Toomey has been doing. Uh, we also have a letter it looks like it was found on, you know, we got a lot of people in the XRP community looking up stuff. This letter was found and it was circulated apparently that around the time William Hinman gave his Ethereum speech. And it, the topic is essentially is XRP a security or not. So attorney uh, Jeremy Hogan weighs in on this. I think this is very important and I'm going to share the details. We also have Swiss regulators have approved their first crypto fund. And Elon Musk weighs in on crypto regulations. So we're going to break it all down. Before we do, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, this video is brought to you by OKCoin Crypto Exchange, where you can buy, sell, and trade your favorite cryptocurrencies and you don't have to pay high fees. OKCoin charges low fees. In addition, you can stake your crypto and keep 100% of the rewards. You don't have to pay any fees. It is also the only exchange you can buy Miami coin. And uh, they have a great promo going on right now until October 7th, where you buy $30 of Miami coin and you get $30 worth of USDT. Great promotion. Be sure to sign up. Link in the description. Um, earlier today, I uploaded my interview with Dan Tapiero, macro investor. He's in the same circles as Dan Moorhead, Raul Powell, and so forth. Guys, a uh, very smart guy, been investing for a long time. I highly recommend you watch his interview. You can just learn a lot and soak up a lot from these macro investors who are now coming into crypto. So very bullish uh, sign overall. All right. Uh, with regards to the market, not much happening, although... XRP did see a big jump, uh, and it's probably due to this news that I'm about to share with you. But look at this spike, right? Now, not a significant spike, you know, in a sense that the market is right now overall in a corrective phase, and we're waiting for a breakout in Q4 to continue the bull, uh, bull run. Um, but, you know, right now we just have to be patient, but it's good to see, you know, this type of price action coming off the news. So, what is the news? Ripple tweeted, we are incredibly excited to launch our $250 million creator fund to enable creators to explore new use cases for NFTs on the XRP ledger and engage more deeply with the communities they care about. This is bullish, guys. Um, here's a summary of some of the things that creators will receive. Financial and co-marketing support, technical support for a superior NFT experience built on the XRP ledger creative support to craft premium NFT projects. I've been waiting for this because I want to build NFTs on the XRP ledger. Why, you may ask? Because I don't want to play ridiculous Ethereum gas fees, <laughs> right? The gas fees for Ethereum, which power a lot of the um, uh, NFTs right now, is mind-bogglingly, mind-blowingly crazy, right? It's just a, a highway robbery. So obviously, XRP, fast low fees, scalable, and you're building on the XRP ledger, you're going to have less friction and you don't have to pay as much. So this is awesome. And you may say, well, what is, why is this important for the price of XRP? Well, similar to Ethereum, you have a network effect, a network value, and this will translate to the value of uh, and the price of XRP increasing. So Ripple provided uh, you know, a full page here where you can apply talking about uh, the tokenized feature and building NFT, NFTs on the XRP ledger, of course. And um, we if you guys remember, they had partnered going back in July with Mintable, which is an NFT marketplace. So they highlighted them here, um, Mint NFT and VSA partners. So this is awesome, guys. Very bullish. And NFTs, as we've been seeing, is growing. It's here to stay. Some may call it a bubble, but every market goes into a bubble. But the, the idea of the technology, guys, uh, of, of this uh, ability to put artwork, video, documents, and so forth in an non-fungible token format is go going to be the future. So you're going to see uh, other use cases outside of artwork, right? And I interviewed just um, two days ago, Halsey Miner of Video Coin, and they're building the infrastructure for video NFTs. 
it is here to stay, my friends. So this is bullish, and I can't wait to build an NFT through Mintable uh, on, on the XRP ledger because I don't want to pay, once again, the ridiculously high gas fees with Ethereum. Um, Brad Garlinghouse tweeted the following. Uh, he said, calling all creators, developers, and brands, Ripple is launching a $250 million creator fund. So very bullish, guys. And I hope you understand the network effect that this will have. Think of Ethereum and the ICOs and the NFTs and the things that are built on top of Ethereum. Likewise, uh, these things will be built on top of uh, the XRP ledger. And obviously, XRP will be leveraged um, same way Ethereum is leveraged when you're transacting um, but you won't have to pay as much of the fees, right? The ridiculous uh, fees. All right. Ripple's general counsel, Stuart Alarati, here's what he had to say about crypto regulations in regards to what Senator Pat Toomey uh, said recently with his letter and so forth. He said, Senator Toomey asked for feedback on crypto and blockchain laws. Here's Ripple's response. And he pointed to a, a, a letter um, on Ripple's website, but here's the TLDR for that. Encourage innovation sandboxes for crypto. Increase public-private collaboration. Engagement and consideration by the Senate of existing legislative uh, efforts. Two, it all comes back uh, to clear regulatory frameworks that allow innovation to flourish with consumer and market protections. We don't have clarity today in the US, despite those who insist on incorrectly suggesting otherwise. You want to know who, who's incorrectly suggesting otherwise? Gary Genser. <laughs> uh, so he says here, thank you, Senator Toomey, for engaging with the industry. Uh, love it. Like This is what we need. This, this market is here to stay. This asset class is here to stay. The innovation and the disruption is going to continue, whether Genser and his cronies and Elizabeth Warren and, and those two He's in a pod, try to stop it. And, you know, I'm sure they're doing the bidding of the banking cartel because this technology disrupts a lot of the banks. So uh, this is great to see that Ripple is participating and they are responding. Um, and this is what we need more crypto companies to do and to come together. Now, this is interesting, guys. Let, let me first give you the backstory here. So shout out to Leonidas who found this. He says, a legal analysis of XRP, a memorandum by the SEC's Division of Corporation Finance, circulated amongst certain SEC officials on June 13th, the day before the Hinman Free Pass speech. Hmm. Yeah. And here's what attorney, attorney Jeremy Hogan had to say. There was a legal analysis of XRP by the SEC in 2018, which, which analysis can be only one of three things. So we don't know the full details, but this was done around that same time. So Hinman, we know they didn't share it with Hester Purse, right? And, and, and there's a lot of things that Hinman, we see the conflicts of interest. Jay Clayton, we see the conflicts of interest. So they probably were preempting, okay, let's do this. Let's, let's do this with XRP. We're going to say it's a security even after eight years. Um, and, and, and we're going to let uh, give Ethereum a free pass and so on and so forth. Well, here's the scenarios Jeremy Hogan outlined. One, XRP is not a security. Enough said. Two, XRP is maybe a security. This is fair notice gold. Hmm. Three, XRP is a security. If so, why try so hard to hide the analysis? So either scenario, the SEC is in a losing position. And we know this. We know this. Is it, this was picking up winners and losers, conflicts of interest. Um, we know where uh, William Hinman went to work and we know where Jay Clayton went to work. So we see the, the straight up conflicts of interest, right? They tried to roadblock XRP because it, it's a competitor of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And they were working for firms that are betting on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, these are government officials. That is <laughs> obviously they're not supposed to be doing that. But uh, this is why people are calling corruption and conflicts of interest, guys. It's Pretty clear. So we'll see where this goes. And, and um, Ripple is fighting to get this revealed, but uh, I think the judge had blocked it. So let's see what happens um, next. Now, attorney John Deaton, you know, I reported yesterday, he's going to be on Fox Business with Charles Gasparino on Friday. And he tweeted the following, the SEC's case against XRP is both disingenuous and intellectually dishonest. 
uh, Ethereum Joseph or, or Joseph Lubin, who's one of the co-founders of Ethereum, admitted in a video that Ether One was never meant to scale and was intentionally offered while they continued to build. Ripple controls 4% of the validators on the XRP ledger. So clear uh, hypocrisy, double standards. But once again, it goes back to conflicts of interest um, because anyone with a normal level of IQ and a, with a brain and logic and real and, and looking at things uh, holistically can see uh, Ethereum shouldn't have gotten a free pass. It, 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 now, I, don't get me wrong. I hold Ethereum. I, I'm just saying uh, the, the same standards should apply to all cryptos, right? They shouldn't be picking a winners and losers. Now, check this out, guys. This is bullish. I love cryptos global. And regardless of what Genser and, and idiots are trying to do, they're not going to stop this. New, Swiss regulators have approved a crypto fund for the first time. So uh, the Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Authority, FINMA, has approved the first crypto fund according to Swiss law. The fund, which is restricted to qualified investors, invests primarily in so-called crypto assets. See what's happening here, guys? Globally, we're seeing uh, ETFs, funds getting approved. And then it goes, goes back to what is the U.S. doing? Genser, what are you doing? Where's the Bitcoin ETF? Why are you filing these dumb lawsuits, right? Um, and we see capitals leaving the United States going into the Canadian Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs. And we have ETFs in Brazil and, and Europe and so forth. So uh, I think this is further going to put more pressure on Genser and, and, and Congress to move. Now, check this out. Elon Musk was interviewed recently, and here's some takeaways. He said, I would do, I would say do nothing, Elon Musk, on Bitcoin and crypto regulation. Um, I, I don't think he meant that you shouldn't regulate them. I think he's it, it, the gist of what he's saying is that um, you shouldn't be trying to over-regulate this and try to stop it because here, here's, here's the context. On the challenge that the decentralization of Bitcoin presents to state powers, Musk said, I suppose cryptocurrency is fundamentally aimed at reducing the power of a centralized government. So, you know, there's other things where he says, uh, like, for example, it is not possible, I think, to, to destroy crypto, but it is possible for governments to slow down its advancement. Um, let's see what else he called out here. Uh, okay, so with regards to crypto is fundamentally aimed at reducing the power of centralized government. He continued, he said, they don't like that. Of course, that's why you see Genser and Elizabeth Warren with the banking cartel are fighting back. Um, and and uh, yesterday, Tom Emmer, you know, they sent a bipartisan support uh, letter to Chairman uh, Powell of the Fed to say, hey, look, crypto is not a competitor to CBDCs and so forth. Um, and so, you know, they're, I think they're worried about the stable coins. So he said here, I wouldn't say that I'm a massive cryptocurrency expert. I think there is some value in cryptocurrency, but I wouldn't say it's the second coming of the Messiah. <laughs> now, obviously, he says this in Bit and, and Tesla is holding Bitcoin on their balance sheet. And obviously, he said they would re-accept Bitcoin as a payment uh, form when the mining, the percentage of, of the mining hits 50% renewable uh, energy. So very interesting statements. And, uh, you know, look, Elon is all over the place. He's got a lot going on. So you, you kind of, you can't take his word as complete gospel. You, you kind of have to read between the lines because uh, we've seen his tweets and his back and forth. He can, he can go back and forth, right? Uh, one foot on this side, uh, one foot on this side. So take it for what it is. But in the overall, I think he's pro crypto. And he's calling out that the governments should not be trying to kill this and, and that he realizes it is taking power away from them. And so that's probably why they're fighting against it. All right, guys, what do you think about this XRP Ripple news here? I think this is bullish. Let me know your thoughts. Leave, your, leave them below in the comment section. Hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I'll talk to you all later.